Hey everyone, welcome back. This is going to be another Play Canvas tutorial. In this one, we're going to make some objects have gravity uh, and be able to collide with each other and uh, get knocked around and interact a little bit more. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to take this uh, ground plane here and I'm actually going to go ahead and delete it. So I just right mouse click on it, hit delete. Uh, I'm going to bring in a new kind of ground. So I'm going to come up here, click on where it says root over here on the left hand side, click on the little plus to add a new entity, and I'm going to add in a new box. With a new box selected, I'm going to come over here to the right and I'll just call that ground instead of box. So it's a little clearer. And over here on the top right, I'm going to change the scale. Uh, so we have something that's a little bit larger. So um, if I do something like I'll do 40, I'll do uh, 10 for the height, and then I'll do 40 uh, like that. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and move it down. And there we go. Okay, so I've got a pretty good sized uh, ground there. Uh, maybe I'll Yeah, I'll make it four on the y-axis. Okay. Okay, so now you'll see that they're just floating above uh, that there. Okay, and to make things a little easier, I'll go ahead and make a real quick new material. Just call it green. Come down here to the diffuse and make it a green. Something like that. Okay, drag and drop, and there we go. Now we can hopefully see better. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to start with the physics. So I'm going to go in and um, I've got, right now, I've got two boxes. One that moves automatically as soon as the game starts. That's the white one. And then this yellow one I can actually kind of drive around. Okay, so that's the current situation. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to click on root, add NC, primitive, and box. And this one's going to be my um, first little uh, victim here, the first little thing that's going to fall. Okay. All right, so there's my... Uh, there's the box. Uh, I gave it a little material just so it's a little easier to see, hopefully. Okay, so with the box selected, I'm going to come over here to the right, click on Add Component, and the first one I want to add is a collision um, component. Now, on my screen right here, um, you can see that there are three things that pop up. It says Type, and it's set to Box. It says Half Extents, and then I've got three numbers here. And then, it says ammo module not found, import ammo. So I'm going to go ahead and click on import ammo. And over here in my assets panel, you might now see that there's a folder here called ammo. Um, we don't really need to go into it. It's basically got some JavaScript there. Um, but um, these are extra files that need to be um, installed or imported uh, so that all the collisions and physics and things like that can happen. All right, so I've got my box selected here, and um, you'll see that now I have two settings. I have the type, and if I click on that, I have all these different shapes. And basically, whatever shape you choose, the shape should match your object as best as possible, and then you're going to get more accurate physical collisions. And since this is a box, the box type is good. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and make this box just a little bit larger. The scale right now is uh, 1, 1, 1. So I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, 2, 2, 2. So there we are. Uh, so now it's just a little bit larger. You can see it better. And we'll get some bigger bounces and stuff. So the half extents is the what's called the hit box. And it's how Play Canvas and the computer can tell if this object gets hit. And because I made it larger, you can actually see it right inside. Do you see that little tiny box inside? That's the hit box. And it's determined by this half extents. So the half extents 
these three numbers here, x, y, and z, should be half of whatever the scale is up here. So since my scale is 2, 2, and 2, then the half extents should be 1, 1, 1. And so that way, um, the hitbox is filling the full box here. Um, and I'll show you what it, how it behaves if, if your um, hitbox is a little bit larger than your actual physical box. Um, it's kind of interesting and, and fun. Okay, so I've got a collision detection on here. Um, I need to add in a collision detection on the ground as well. So I'll select my ground object, add component, and I'll add in a collision. Um, now, the ground is obviously much larger. You can see the scale here is 40, then 4, and 40. So for the hitbox, uh, it needs to be half of that. So the half extents need to be 20, 2, and 20. Okay, uh, so again, the half extents needs to be exactly half on all three axes as the scale. All right, we're finishing up. I'm going to go ahead and now select the box that's going to be falling, and I'm going to add in one last component, and the last component is rigid body. Now, rigid body um, is going to, uh, you can see it down here, is going to give it either gravity and determine how it interacts with other uh, objects. So if I launch this right now and press play, you'll see that nothing happens. Here's the shadow of, of the box. I clearly need to move my camera uh, outward. So I'm going to select my camera. There we go. Okay, there we go. So uh, the box is not falling. Why? Well, with the box selected, I'll come back down here to uh, the rigid body, and it's because of this first setting here called type. Right now, by default, it's set up to be static, and static means no movement. I have two others that would allow movement and gravity, dynamic and kinematic. We're just going to focus on static and dynamic. Um, I also have down here, I have two settings for friction and restitution. Friction is basically when two objects um, collide with each other, it's the resistance or the friction uh, that they have between each other. Restitution is basically um, the amount of bounciness that the objects will have um, against each other. All right, so I'm going to change the type from static to dynamic. And you'll see that when you change it to dynamic, you get a bunch more settings. Now, I'm going to click on the ground object. And I, for this to work, I need to add in another component, and I need to add in a rigid body. And this one I'm going to leave as static because I don't want the ground to change. All right, I'll click on play. And you'll see, see now the box falls, uh, and, it, uh, and you see it had a little bit of a bounce there. Okay, so I'm going to click on the box that falls. And I'm going to change the restitution. Right now it's at 0 0.5, so 50%. I'm going to go ahead and up that to 1, so that's 100%. And then I'm going to select the ground, and the ground also has a restitution. For laughs, I'm going to go ahead and bring that up to 1. Let's just see what that does. So now we have full bouncy effect restitution on both objects, and you can see it will bounce for quite a while until it hits an edge and you can see what happens. And that's a lot of fun. And I'll just keep going and it should fall off uh, the ground there. Okay, so that's awesome. Now, as fun as that was, we probably don't wanna have that much bouncing going on uh, in our scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back to 0 0.5. So play around with it. Make sure you do that to your ground. Okay, good. Um, all right, so now what I'm going to do is we're just going to do um, a little bit of a physics uh, test here. Um, I'm going to show you what happens if your half extends. It's kind of like that little force field. that's that hitbox if it's the wrong size. So, for instance, you'll see on the y-axis, my hitbox is 2. Well, what if I go ahead and I bring that up to 4? Now what you'll see is you'll see that the hitbox is actually larger than the actual ground object. Do you see that? 
it's going above and it's going below. So here's what will happen. Now when I press play, the box will hit the hitbox before it actually hits the ground. It's going to look as if it's hitting an invisible force field. And there it is. It's hit the invisible force field um, and it just stops. There's not much of a bounce um, and it's not going to keep bouncing, but it's, it's, it's there. So you can either, you can do that and you can have an invisible field. So you can do that in a video game that might be helpful where you have an invisible wall. Uh, like if you want to keep players out of a certain area, you could ha extend your, your half extends hitbox and it would, um, keep them out of a place. What you don't want to do though, is you don't want the hitbox to be too big because then, um, collisions will be inaccurate. And if a player, uh, gets damaged or dies, um, or some things like that, then they're going to think that the game is, um, is cheap and inaccurate, um, and that they lost because, uh, you made a mistake. So just be very mindful of that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and have a little bit of uh, physics fun here. Let me pause the video and I'll be back. All right, so essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking that one box that falls and has all the collision and, and physics on it and I'm duplicating it. So I came over here and I right mouse clicked and I chose duplicate and I made a second one. I made a third one and a fourth one and then I, um, and then I selected them. So um, if I select this one, So if I click on this one over here and on a Mac, you can hold down the command key. Uh, and I, so I command click on all of these over here and it selects all four of these here. Uh, on a Windows um, computer, you can hold down the control key and click and you can select them. So now that I have them selected, I'm gonna right mouse click and I'm gonna choose duplicate. So now they're duplicated again and I'm gonna bring them up. So now I've got three rows of boxes here. Okay, just so you can see. I'm going to go over here to the root. I'm going to add in a new primitive, and this time it's going to be a sphere. I'm going to go ahead and increase the scale. And I'm going to look in the top view. I basically want the sphere to be uh, right underneath those because I want them to fall on it. So uh, again, you just you just come over here up in the top right hand corner, click on it. You can choose whatever view you want. I can look through the camera if I want. Um, OK, I want perspective. There we go. OK, good. I'll select my camera. Move my camera back. I want to actually enjoy seeing them fall. Okay, and for this to work, I have to select the sphere, come over here, add a component. Uh, it needs a collision sphere, or sorry, a collision component. I'm going to change the type from box to sphere. Um, well, actually, let me, let me leave it as a box so you can see what happens. Uh, and then I'm going to add on another component and it's going to be a rigid body. So it's solid and I'm going to leave it at static. Okay. Press play launch. Okay. Not quite as awesome as I had expected Let's figure out why. So the sphere has the wrong type, but it has the really the wrong half extents. So I'm going to leave it at box type and um, the sphere's scale is 666. Six, six. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the half extents be 333. Three, three. Okay, so there it is there, but you can see it's a box, so it's still the wrong shape. Now you can see it, it clearly reacted fine, but it's a, it's a box, so, but it worked. And it reacted as if it was hitting a box. 
So now I'll go ahead and change that to a sphere. And again, we get just the radius here. The radius says 0 0.5. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 3. And so now it's the size of the sphere. So it doesn't say half extents, but it's the radius. So it's the same thing. Press launch, and we should see hopefully something different where it kind of slides and rolls off. There we go. That's what I was expecting. OK, awesome. Um, and then last but not least, on the sphere, um, it does have restitution. So if I increase the restitution to 1, um, it should add in a little bit more bounce effect. And you can check it out. This will be my last test. There we go. We got a little bit of bounce, kind of ricocheting off. And there is a little bit of a shadow problem on there, but that's not what I'm worried about. Okay, everyone, um, that's going to be it for this tutorial. So hopefully uh, you understand the basics of uh, physics, and I will see you next time. There's the bell.